troll in exile. Did Trump claim there would be a bloodbath if he wasn't elected or was he just on his period? I'm Bridget Fettacy, and this is your dumpster fire for the weeks of March 9th to March 21st. Once again, it is don't make me defend Trump o'clock again in America, because as usual, the media took something that Trump said about the auto industry and applied it to him basically saying that there would be a civil war if he wasn't elected. This week, Trump, during one of his rallies, was talking about how the auto industry would leave America and American cities. He tacked on to his discussion about the auto industry with it would be a bloodbath if he wasn't elected. We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Oh, my God! And, of course, the mainstream media that we know and love took that stupid quote and ran with it completely out of context and just left the context out and acted like he was saying that it would be a bloodbath if he wasn't elected like a civil war and an insurrection, and that's not what he was saying at all. And don't make me defend this guy, but I will. I will I will be full-blown MAGA if that's what it takes to get the media to stop being such liar, liar, pants on fire. It's so frustrating. It only helps him. Yeah. I just don't understand. It only makes his defenders like more staunchly like, ah, that's making me a staunch defender Uh of Trump. It is so dishonest. If you're somebody like many of my family members who only watch MSNBC or CNN or see headlines from any of the left wing media, they believe this. They 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 will say, did you see Trump's bloodbath comment? Yeah, I did. And I saw the whole context in Europe idiot if you think that that's what he was referring to and you shouldn't trust anything that the media says about anything anymore (laughs) what you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening conservatives were actually disappointed that trump was referring to the auto industry they went and were like we're gonna go get our muskets and then they came out and were like oh he wasn't calling for a civil war we attack tomorrow yes tomorrow I mean it this time. I do, too. He just was talking about the auto industry. I'll just keep on waiting. (laughs) (laughs) The real bloodbath is how many people the media continues to lay off every week. And they I don't like to cheer for people losing their livelihoods. But if you are going to take things out of context and destroy your credibility and make the American population cynical and untrustworthy of you, I hate to say it, but you deserve it and kind of have it coming. No one believes anything you say anymore. You've lost all credibility. And didn't you learn from 2016? Most Americans don't believe this. If you're in a small town in America and the factory gets shut down so that the auto industry can go make Chinese cars in Mexico that are laced with fentanyl, you're going to be pretty upset and you're going to know what Trump is talking about. And you're going to be paying attention. But does the media care about this? No, because they're all on the trains running up and down New York City to D.C. in their little fancy cars on their phone calls being obnoxious in the quiet cars. The real bloodbath is in my pants once a month. (laughs) Just do women's comedy stuff. You know, talk about how fat you are and how you want to have sex with guys and then say my vagina a lot. Uh, I can make that joke because I'm a woman. Join us at Fetacy.com to get the unedited version of Dumpster Fire every single time we shoot a Dumpster Fire. You get it early and you also get a cool community and lots of other things. And that's it. Just go join Fetacy.com. Support this show that you love so much or hate so much, whatever your fancy might be. If you can't subscribe, we understand times are tough. The best thing you can do is like, subscribe, comment. If you don't know what to say, just put emojis of the world burning. (laughs) Conspiracy theories we can get behind. Who killed the Boeing whistleblower? Apparently he unalived himself, but uh, he certainly didn't choke on his whistle. (laughs) If I wind up dead in a parking lot, it wasn't an accident. It was Boeing or China. (laughs) 
It does feel like someone's sabotaging Boeing at this point. It it feels a little bit like someone out there is just not screwing things on tight and leaving rickety parts of the plane. Are these things like duct taped together? I don't understand what's going on. Every single other day, it feels like something's falling off of a plane. It sounds like they are. They've just been using shoddy parts and old parts for it years. It seems weird that it's all happening all at once, but maybe this is just... Uh, like they've reached their catastrophic failure point. Yeah, they've reached their catastrophic failure point, And now places like Kayak are allowing you to search for a flight by plane. And I am mad at Boeing because this has affected me personally, not in the way that I had to sit on the tarmac for a mechanical delay, or I was on a plane that had a panel fall off in the sense that my mother-in-law, I know you're watching this, got to say, I told you so, because I mocked that poor dear woman for her overly concerned fear of flying and specifically said Boeing has problems. And I was like, ah, you're just being melodramatic and ridiculous. And the chances of something like a panel falling off your plane are quite low. And now she's like, see, I hate to say I told you so. You don't hate to say it. <laughs> right. Because she would only book flights on certain. Yeah, planes. she would only she would only she would not fly Boeing. And I made fun of her for it. And now there's now there's an easy way to search for those flights. It isn't as challenging. So, yes, you were right. I was wrong. Hope you're enjoying your stupid life. I also resent that this is only aggravating her already terrifying fear of flying because we would like to see her more often. What happened to the plane train industry is what's happening to the plane industry because there's like derailings on trains all the time. This is why train in America is not really something that's affordable or even realistic unless you're going up and down the Northeastern corridor. Those trains are not in good shape and neither are the tracks. American infrastructure is in trouble. And a lot of people, our old friend James Lindsay, good old friend of the show, James Lindsay, he will say it's like the DEI industry. And maybe it also seems like just cutting corners. And generally, I feel like this is what huge corporations do in order to save money and make money and make their fat cat, you know, investors rich so they can fly on private jets while we rain from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> the FAA does not give a sh about the American people. How have there been this many incidents with this specific plane at, or planes and they haven't grounded all of them and said no one's flying anywhere until we figure out what the F is going on with all of these planes and make sure all the screws are tight and make sure that thing everything is on correctly. They don't care. They don't care if backpacks and away bags and fatties rain down upon the Midwest. They don't care if the DEI industry is carpet bombing America with fatties. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Dave Yates, who writes for the show, said he's been on at least five broken planes with mechanical issues in like the past two weeks because he flies a lot. It's terrifying out there, but this is just their way to try my my conspiracy theory is that this is because they're trying to get us not to fly as much because of, you know, climate change or whatever. And this is their way of doing it. They're going to they're going to have people falling out of the sky and be like, see, you shouldn't fly as much. These planes aren't safe. And it's bad for the climate or whatever. Yeah. This poor whistleblower finally gets to a point where he talked about all the things in court. He's finally being taken seriously. He's been talking about this stuff for years. And then magically, right before he goes to his final hearing or one of his hearings, he doesn't show up. And he's just unalived himself in a car, in a parking lot. We've all seen this movie. Whistleblowers falling out of the sky. <laughs> Women! Women! 
<laughs> I did some stand up with the lovely Dave Landau last week in Dallas. There will be more coming to cities near you. And one of our fans came to the show, and the first thing he said to me was, Women! <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that so much. Please come see live comedy. It is really just it's so good for the soul, especially Dave Lando. He's a genius. Women got tired of looking at chodes in the locker room, and they're finally fighting back. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by that is a bunch of women are getting together, and they're suing the NCAA for allowing biological men in the women's locker rooms and to compete with them. They got tired of being told to stay in their lane. <laughs> I'm married and I don't want to see my husband's balls other than the fact that they have been manscaped <laughs> and he might hide them with his sheath underwear, but no woman wants to see balls in the locker room. No woman really wants to see balls at all. <laughs> Good for these women though. Back to the women <laughs> having to look at men's junk in the locker room. The last thing you want to see before you're trying to get all pumped up for a race is a balls they're changing in broom closets uh-huh nothing's nothing says pump yourself up for a race and feel like a champion than going into a broom closet to change so that you can escape the chud from the man who's in the locker room with you pretending that he's a woman i'm not comfortable with the sex i was assigned at birth so i'm exercising my right to identify with the gender of my choice now get out of my way i have to take a shit I feel like all of these women, like, it's gone too far. I don't know how it's gotten this far. It feels like men have kind of bullied women into believing that this is okay and silence them if they even try and push back, as we've seen in many protests. But this is battered woman syndrome. Ladies, stop. I mean, I know the ladies that watch us are kind of on board, but this is a, like, liberal woman problem. You guys are, you are signing the check for your own demise. I don't understand it other than to think that you're mentally ill too <laughs> or you're just trying to go along with what's cool or trying to go along with what's like allowed but this feels like battered woman syndrome right. and i'm glad the women are fighting back you should fight back against this more and more people should speak out against this we didn't fight for single sex spaces for as long as we fought for them only to cede them to a bunch of men who want to stay on top now Good. I'm glad they're suing. Yeah. At least this this is progress. At least I feel like people are pushing back against some of the insanity. Uh, because I'm tired of talking about it. You think I want to fight this fight? It's the stupidest fight in the whole world. <laughs> we're going to look back on this and be like, that was insane. What were we thinking? Or it's just going to be some stepping stone to transhumanism, in which case we're fucked anyways. You know who it is. Our favorite, our ride or die, sheathunderwear.com. Sheath Underwear has been with us for the long haul, and we love their products. They have underwear for men and women. They've got the dual pouch system, which allows the junk to stay in one place, and then you separate it from the genitalia. There's a little hole where it can go, bonjour, and then keep it separate from the legs. Everything has its own compartment. They have fantastic stuff for women. I love their new Paisley line. It has a little bit of a thinner elastic band. It's super comfortable. They've got sports bras. They've got all kinds of new products coming out all the time. Sheath is huge. If you've been buying Sheath, they're blowing up. They're sponsoring the UFC. They still sponsor Little Old Us, so please support them. Support the people who have supported this show from the beginning. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use the code DUMPSTER to get 20% off your entire order. That's sheathunderwear.com. Use the code DUMPSTER to get 20% off your entire order. The link is in the description below. Patriarchy so crafty. Dylan Mulvaney mocks liberal women to their face and they still say, yes, queen. <laughs> Literally, I'm convinced the guy is a conservative plant. This spy has already breached our defenses. 
It's too weird. The video that Dylan did, which we uh, has been covered ad nauseum, I don't really even like giving attention to it because it's truly genius because I don't know who this person's audience is. It's not gays. It's trans people have a lot of issues with Dylan. It's liberal women who are, uh, uh, that is his audience. It is making a mockery of every liberal woman trope. Monday can't get out of bed. Tuesday morning, kick a mess. Wednesday, retail therapy. Cash or credit, I say yes. Thursday had a walk of shame. Didn't even know his name. It's the whole video was like, I'm going to be in a bath having a mental breakdown after I take a bunch of pills <laughs> and go sleep around and can't remember who I slept with and do a walk of shame. Use my breakdown in the bath. You're making fun of, you just described the average liberal woman. Makes such a mockery of women in general. And I thought we were supposed to get away from all of these sexist ideas of what it means to be a woman. And instead it's just, so much of the trans ideology relies on actual sexist tropes being true. Hey, little Jimmy likes Barbie, so I guess he's a girl. And little Alana likes trucks, so let's chop her boobs off. <laughs> that escalated quickly. There's progress on that front in Europe. Europe's making progress or or going I don't even hate, I hate calling it progress because it's like just reverting back to not insane, but I guess that's progress. Yeah. So the NSA basically backtracked and said they're not giving puberty blockers to kids because they're, sh surprise, surprise, harmful side effects to stopping puberty. You don't say, I'm not a doctor and I could have told you that. I feel like the average person could have figured that out. My culture is not your costume. You don't get to t appropriate my 20-year-old self of being a crazy slut who couldn't remember where I was in the morning and had breakdowns in the bathtub and put it on and act like now it's yours. How come you get mad if you appropriate any other culture, but you can just take a crazy woman and put it on and act like, oh, this is me now. And by the way, the song is the days of girlhood. It's not even womanhood. These are the days, these are the days. trying to appropriate girl culture as a grown man, which is creepy. It's very creepy. You're wearing little girl socks and you're playing in little girl bedrooms and you're trying to be like a little girl. And this is, I'm sorry, creepy. I'm not a weirdo for thinking this. This is the baseline feeling most people have when viewing something like this. And it's not because they're transphobic. It's because they don't want or trust a man dressing up to try and get around little girls or be little girls. It's creepy. Look, Dylan seems actually lovely and happy and a pretty happy-go-lucky person, whatever, even if they are creepy for dressing up like a girl. If you're an adult, do what you want. I hate that everybody's pushing. What I hate is the, like, forced compliance and in all of this. It's just not allowing people to have any other feelings about it or be like, yeah, okay, go do that, but I don't need that to be on my television every five seconds. It's weird. But they were like, oh, I'm doing consulting now for brands. Dylan said this. I'm like, what are you consulting them? How to destroy your brand in five easy steps? One easy step. Hire me. <laughs> I'm doing consulting now for brands. Oh, because this has gone well for you and the brand. Literally, Bud Light had to get the UFC, Shane Gillis, whoever the F they have now promoting them to make up for one stupid commercial that you did. They had to go to the whole manosphere. <laughs> they have Andrew Date drinking Bud Light. <laughs> now let's check the weather with Bella Asario. 
Michoacán con 28 grados, cielos nublados para ellos, Jalisco con 27, cielos nublados, Nayarit cielos totalmente despejados, muy buenos para llevar a cabo cualquier pendiente por realizar durante esta tarde. Thank you, Baba. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons. Touch my bells and buttons. Tell your friends about us. Join us for the party that is 2024. Electile dysfunction. The gerontocracy that no one wants. <laughs> We're all in the nursing home now, folks. What is happening? Kate Middleton is destroying what's left of our collective sanity, if there was any left at all. Kate Middleton, for those of you who live not on Earth, has been missing. She basically had some kind of surgery and very clearly said she would not be back to work until after Easter. But everyone thinks she's dead. There's so many conspiracies and everyone's in on it. And because of engagement farming, it's the thing that now everybody's, it's like this loop that feeds itself because everybody's in this frenzy about it. Then they drive more videos about it and then people talk about it more. And then the royal family is just botching every job. It almost feels intentional. They tried to put everyone at ease by releasing a very poorly photoshopped photo image and then I don't know allegedly she was at the farmer's market it really it, it could just be her who's lost weight and then somebody zoomed in and used like the AI oh let's unblur her face because it was from far away this stuff isn't great this technology and it, but it made her look completely different and now it, and then that went viral I don't know if they're using it to distract from the fact that King Charles is dying. Another conspiracy is that they're kind of driving all the frenzy around Kate because he's really dying. There's another conspiracy that she had an abortion with her lover and they forced her to get this abortion because she got pregnant with her lover after he had a kid with his lover and they were comparing <laughs> the kids. Somebody said that she got her like face and body swapped. I mean, it, it is wild. Oh, there's so many. There's another theory that they're in a bunker, that Kate and the kids are actually in a bunker because something is coming. Um, wow. Yeah. I no. have not heard any of the theories. Oh, you can go down the rabbit yeah. hole for hours on this stuff. Not that I have. But I'm telling you, 90s Americans cannot deal with the loss of another princess. <laughs> They're not handling this well. It's nuts. It's been wild. It's I, again, I don't even really want to cover it, but you can't avoid it. It's everywhere. I was on Instagram and it's just like, what's next with the queen? None of our business. None of our business, anyways. Her health stuff is not our business. I know everyone thinks it is. I don't like it. It feel because to me the the crazy rabbit obsession feels a little bit. And I said this on Normal World, like it feels a little bit like we're all on motorcycles chasing a limo. <laughs> right. It has the same like frenzy crazy this is another like mind virus or something where that frenzy reaches like fever pitch and everybody's like where's the princess where's the princess where's the princess where's the princess what is that that gets in in the brains of humans and they're like where's the princess where's the princess where's the princess the princess the princess we gotta follow the princess we have to find the princess it feels like we all played way too much super mario when we were kids <laughs> It's a princess, it's a princess, I gotta find the princess, the princess, I gotta get the princess, she's been kidnapped. Uh, my theory is that she's been kidnapped by Bowser. I'm not kissing you. Okay, screw this, screw it. Hey, dragon, you can have her. We're getting some word in. It appears that you're all assholes. You basically bullied the poor Kate Middleton princess lady into coming out and disclosing that she has cancer. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London. And at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. This, of course, came as a huge shock. And William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. 
Now everybody's acting like they weren't all obsessed and frenzied and trying to figure out what was wrong with this woman. An article just came out recently about how the internet needs to leave Kate Middleton alone. And where was this weeks ago when no one was leaving her alone? Now they're all like, why didn't she tell us sooner? You you don't have any right to this woman's poor health history. Now she had to come out and sit on a bench in front of a green screen and tell everybody that she has cancer. All I can say is I wish her well and her poor children and family and you're all dicks. Let's take a minute to thank our sponsor, Factor. Factor has delicious, pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. They have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. One of the hardest things is eating well when you're busy. They have two-minute meals. And these are really good meals, you guys. The quality is high, the food is incredible, and the taste is delicious. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, no cooking, no cleanup needed. Less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. You can get as much or as little as you need that week by choosing 6 to 18 meals. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. I love Factor. Head to factormeals.com slash dumpster50 and use the code DUMPSTER50 to get 50% off. That's code DUMPSTER50 at factormeals.com slash DUMPSTER50 to get 50% off. Link in the description below. You've probably already heard of Bon Charge, the holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. I've been using their red light face mask and it is amazing. I actually notice a huge difference even in my sunspots. Red light therapy has been reviewed in over 4,000 peer-reviewed studies with 400 plus being double blind placebo trials. Not only do these studies show amazing health benefits, not one has shown any negative side effects. I am loving my Bone Charge Red Light face mask. I use it for 10 minutes every night. It's super lightweight. The face doesn't get hot. It's got near infrared and red light. You can switch between them or use them both at the same time, which is what I do. There are so many other problems the Red Light face mask helps with. Wrinkles and fine lines, a sore jaw, eczema. It helps with migraines, acne, scar tissue, and so much more. Go to bonecharge.com slash Bridget and use the coupon code Bridget to save 15% off. This is a great deal. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash Bridget and use the coupon code Bridget to save 15% off. Mother's Day is coming up. This would be the best Mother's Day gift. By the way, folks, some me time. Link in the description below. Gen Z discovers. Gen Z discovers. A young man went viral this past week for talking about bottle night. Bottle night that he has with his girlfriend where they put their phones away in another room. They each get a bottle of wine and then they drink out of the bottle together and they hang out and talk. Gen Z, let me introduce you to alcoholism. Some of us have been doing this for a long time. I love that they act like this is new, like drinking right out of a bottle of wine. Okay, Gen Z discovers a toxic alcoholic relationship. <laughs> this is, for some of us, particularly those of us in recovery, this is not new. Apparently, Maggie has never drank straight out of a bottle of wine. I don't think I have. Yes, because you're a classy <laughs> non-alcoholic. <laughs> I, the next step in this evolution is for you to be drinking this straight out of the bottle in the shower crying. (laughs) And then following that, you will together both be hating the birds at six o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Also wondering why that car hasn't moved in three days. The new Twitter is so much engagement farming, too. Yeah. It's just it's like these open ended questions where you'll say something ridiculous and basic like, hey, I discovered that going for a walk in the morning gives me and then it'll be like, what do you guys think? And then under this tweet, of course, is like, but in my side hustle, I've actually like, what was it? It's always the same thing. Like in my side hustle, I consult people on how to grow their business in 30 days. Right. 
Link in bio. Right. Nudes in bio. I didn't even want to cover this because, you know, he wanted to go viral and did. But we're going to give him the clicks he so craves. The clicks he craves as he feeds the algorithm. We must feed the algorithm. <laughs> dumpster diving. What's next in the dumpster? <laughs> A gang leader named Barbecue is taking over Haiti. It wouldn't be a dumpster fire without covering the Haitian cannibalism. Apparently, Haiti is disintegrating and on fire. Oh, my God. A lot of this is probably our fault from America. <laughs> I bl- we blame ourselves. Sorry, Haiti. Haiti is in a state of chaos and internal strife. Dominican Republic has a closed border with them. It's nuts. It sounds crazy. The videos coming out of there are crazy, particularly the video of a man allegedly eating human flesh. This guy, Barbecue, Jimmy Barbecue, as they said on Normal World, he was like, Jimmy Barbecue sounds a little too adorable for a guy who lights likes to light people on fire. Although it does seem like an actual appropriate name for him. Barbecue just sounds, you know, I have good connotations with barbecue. Don't ruin it for me, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy's actually got his own podcast, and what he was really doing was butcher box ad because now he's on the carnivore diet. <laughs> Jimmy Barbecue is a better name than the Liver King, which sounds disgusting. Yeah. Come on, Liver King branding. <laughs> Pretty soon it's just going to be the activists who are like, oh, did you think eating the rich was a metaphor? Oh, what did you think? It was just poems and memes. Is that what you think? No, this is what eating the rich looks like. <laughs> I've invited all of you to this island in order to to eat us. Yeah, actually, that's you hit the nail on the head. Tell Maggie in the comments what barbecue sauce goes best with human flesh. <laughs> breaking Bridget. <laughs> this week on Breaking Bridget, I'm bringing in a consultant, our richness advisor, Carol Roth. Carol is an author of the fantastic books you should absolutely read, The War on Small Business, the fantastic new book she wrote, You Will Own Nothing. She is probably singularly the only person in media who's talking about finance and how this affects the working class person and small businesses. Literally nobody is covering this. And thank God now Glenn Beck has a great relationship with her and he has her on regularly to talk about how this stuff is affecting the average American because she tracks stuff that is affecting small businesses. She was was all about the independent contractor rule, which by the way, while everybody was freaking out about Kate Middleton went into effect last Monday. So great job, everybody. Keep calling your representatives. Anyways, now I welcome my friend and richness advisor, friend of the show, Carol Roth. Welcome, Carol Roth, my richness advisor, my beautiful, stunning, intelligent friend who understands the things that most Americans should be paying attention to and aren't. Thank you. Happy to be here as a special correspondent or perhaps a special guest star. You're the special guest star correspondent, first correspondent that Dumpster Fire has ever had, actually. We're stepping things up. Please explain to us what C-T-A-B-O-I-B-S, whatever this rule is. Okay. So there's a couple of them, but the one that it pertains to small businesses. So if you have an LLC, you have an S corp, you have any entity around your business, there is something called the corporate transparency act beneficial ownership information rule. It is being handled by the financial crimes enforcement network division of the treasury. And they want your information. Yes. They want to take small businesses and dump them and your personal information information into a database because Bridget they're trying to fight crime they don't want money laundering they don't want those cartels who I'm sure are going to give all of their information to the financial crimes enforcement network so in the process they would just like for you to hand over all of that information so they can track you your business and your assets so this is insane because I first of all I don't trust any of my information anywhere I not enough people are talking about the United Healthcare hack did have you heard about this 
this. It's insane. No one's talking about this either, but basically one in three Americans medical information is just kind of being held hostage at the moment. And you can't get your claims processed. People can't find doctors. It's a mess. Another segment for another time. But I certainly don't and I don't trust any of this information online. I have an escort, for example. So what does that mean that someone like me would have to do? Okay. So basically here's what the rule says. It says, if you have an entity around your business, something that you have filed a document with a secretary of state or a similar entity, FinCEN wants you to report. Now, if you had your business before January 1st of 2024, you have until January 1st of 2025, the first day of next year in order to do this, which is why I personally with an LLC am not doing this, trying to get this uh, jettisoned in the meantime. However, if you've created a new one this year, since January 1st, 2024, it was 30 days. They've pushed it out to 90 days. You only have 90 days to file your information. And that means you have to go to the FinCEN website and you have to upload all of this personal data. You have to upload a a photo ID. And as you mentioned with the fraud, not only is FinCEN itself somewhat questionable, but the very first thing you'll see is an alert about fraud because, of course, everybody who's a scammer is taking advantage of this and they're emailing uh, people and corporations and, and LLCs and saying, hey, we're FinCEN when oh they're not. Oh, my God. So, so it's a disaster. The, is this the Biden administration that pushed this? Is this bipartisan? Who is pushing this? So you cannot blame President Biden and you cannot blame President Trump other than Biden has done nothing to correct this. But this was passed under Trump's administration through Congress and it made its way to to Trump's death. And Trump actually vetoed this. Yay. But then he sent it back to Congress and they overturned the veto. So Congress is at fault. They are the ones that need to fix this. And by the way, it's been found unconstitutional. There was a lawsuit a small business advocacy group that went uh, through the state of Alabama federal district court. They said, yeah, this is unconstitutional. You can't just throw everybody in a database because, you know, you think somebody's going to commit a crime. However, FinCEN has taken the position, and I've never heard this before. I'm certainly not a legal scholar, but haven't heard this one before. Well, we're only then going to say it's unconstitutional uh, for those plaintiffs. So we won't let those plaintiffs, they, they won't be required, but everybody else still has to do this. That is insane. <laughs> it's literally insane. It's literally insane. So this is, the, so here's, by the way, here's the worst part of this. If you don't do this, or if you don't update your information, you become a criminal. There are not only civil penalties, but criminal penalties, including jail time. So not only do you need to do this, and by the way, they've done a terrible job. Nobody knows about this, which is why I'm so thrilled that you're letting people know about it. But if you do not update your information, so imagine you get married, imagine you move, maybe the information on your driver's license changes, whatever it is. If you don't tell FinCEN, again, the penalty, something like five hundred dollars a day and possible jail time. They're making you a criminal because they're supposedly trying to go after money launderers and cartels. I know it, it, it is the most disgusting overstep of government that I have seen. And you have to ask yourself, Bridget, why do they want all the small business owners in a database? Why do yeah. they want to know who owns businesses? Seems a little sketchy to me. So we are working to try to overturn this. I have a call with some congressional staffers today. Uh, I've been with Glenn Beck, and we're talking about potentially filing another lawsuit. So we're working, but you've got to call your reps. you got to tell them, back off. We don't want this Corporate Transparency Act beneficial ownership information rule, which you can't even pronounce or remember, but tell them they need to go back to Congress and overturn. Can I ask you who put this to Congress and why? <laughs> so this was so part of some home, Homeland Security oh, package Jesus. kind of thing. But, you know, the, the crazy part about it is that they have exempted all the big businesses. Of course they have, just like so COVID. If you, right. If you have tw- 20 employees or 5 million or more in revenue, you don't have to do this. So it's just like, like you said, an echo of what happened during the, the pandemic. Small businesses have been through enough and now they want to make you a criminal. 
And can you just give, give us a quick update on the independent contractor rule that um, we had covered here on Dumpster Fire and everybody was obsessed with Kate Middleton and it went into effect this past Monday? Yes. So it is uh, technically in effect, although I don't know anybody who's changed their behavior from it. And it's super unclear. So we're not really sure how it's going to end up um, kind of going, you know, going down in terms of enforcement. But basically, they don't want you to be an independent contractor. They don't want you to be a gig worker. They want you to be an employee so they can throw you into the unions. For people who are so obsessed with choice, they do not seem to care about choice when it comes. <laughs> <laughs> to your work. If you and I have come to an agreement and we want to exchange labor and money, why should the government come in and say, I'm sorry, I don't like the way that you guys are doing that. They're in a bad financial position. They want, should want people who are working as much as possible and earning more money to pay down their debt that they keep incurring and they keep putting up more barriers. So again, an affront not only to small businesses who use uh, independent contractors and gig workers, but I think now it's like 70 million people uh, are participating in the gig economy and that's what technology has enabled. And of course, we have all of these olds in Congress who don't seem to understand. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't even Congress this particular time, uh, but this was the Biden administration, their their uh, Department of Labor. But they had also tried to pass the PRO Act, too. So they're, right. they're coming at it from, you know, all different areas trying to keep us down, keep uh, the people down. So, folks, do call your reps because even a, it, 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 you'd be surprised if enough people call their reps and they hear from people enough about something, they do actually think it matters. People, I think, feel like calling doesn't matter, but it doesn't take that many people calling a rep to about one topic for them to actually pay attention to it and start to hear from other people and meet with people like yourself, Carol, and get out there and maybe try and change some of this because it is out of control. 15 or 20 people. You have to understand nobody calls their reps anymore. Other than if the TikTok rings <laughs> off the hook 15 or 20 times in a day, they panic. So yeah. all of a sudden, this is the most important thing you've ever seen. You know how like a trends on social media, you know, five people are talking about something and then it's people on Twitter are saying same thing goes. So get the small businesses in your area, get the people who work for them, the people who support them, get 20 people, call Let's get this changed. Awesome. Well, that was a much better breaking Bridget than I could have explained. I am so grateful to have you in my life. I'm grateful to have you on the front lines for small businesses, independent contractors, and just the general right to make a living the way that America intended. <laughs> May we all spread the richness of Dumpster Fire and the American Dream. Our richness advisor, Carol Roth. Where can we find you, Carol, and all of your your wisdom and insight? So if you want my personal newsletter with more info like this, it's at carolroth.com slash news. And I am across social media at Carol J.S. Roth. I'm grateful for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Follow Carol on any social media. Go subscribe to her newsletter. If you want to make a difference, please actually call your representatives, listen to her, and we will have her back on the show. She's fantastic. But if you want to keep up with what's going on in this country, she's one of the best followers to have. Fantasy News. Join us at Fantasy.com. You get the unedited version of Dumpster Fire. You get a whole community and lots of other stuff. Join us there, Fantasy.com. And also, make sure you go buy stuff from our sponsors. It makes our show possible. So please support the people who support us. I've had a lot of women asking me why my skin looks incredible. It is this mask. It's amazing. So go support the people who support us. Sheath Underwear, Factor, Bone Charge. Also, thank you to you, our audience, subscribers. We love you. This is so much fun. I love when you come see me in person. It makes me realize people are actually watching this show and love it. And we hope to help keep you sane. We are off next weekend, and then we will be on for as many weekends as we can possibly manage, as many weeks and as many dumpster fires as we can crank out heading into this election because things are just going to get turned up to 11. And now... To cleanse your palate, the internet is glorious.
the time uh, 1980 rolled around a decade later, it was Coke, and it was Southern Comfort, and it was a different man every night. And if you have a minute, why don't we go talk about it somewhere only we know? Oh, no. Remember, life is absurd. Don't take yourself so damn seriously. This has been your dumpster fire for the weeks of March 9th to March 21st. I'm Bridget Fetussy. Now make me rich! So we can do more of this! We just want to do more! And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns.